Dispensationalism is a very important doctrine because they will mess up right here with James chapter 2 and verse 24. James chapter 2 verse 24. Very common passage. Basically, a lot of churches know that verse. It's basically by works. They say, you see then how by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So James 2.24, what it's showing right here is that there is faith and works. Now, Christians... Because they believe salvation by faith alone, they have a problem right here. So, what's, how do they reconcile this? This is a problem, alright? The problem is, because they think that this passage, when we believe in faith, alone without works, but then right here at James, when it says faith and works, they somehow mean the same thing. No, if you look at the words, that's not the same thing. Amen. But this is how they'll do it. So then they'll reword it, and they put it as this way. It is faith alone, see? No works. But this faith produces works. <laughs> you know what they're doing? They're just simply moving works right here to over here, you see? So that's a clever interpretation. You heard Ray Comfort, you heard Paul Washer, John MacArthur, and I guarantee you this, about 90% of the churches, sadly, they go by this method. But this is a plain contradiction. Why? Because look at Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. If you look at that passage, what did Paul say? He said that if you don't work, but you just believe, that faith is automatically counted as righteousness, salvation. So it didn't just say faith. It said faith without works. See, that's what faith alone really means. It just means as it says. It means faith alone, without works. Look at Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. But to him that worketh not. See, let's say you don't work, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. You only believe. But it's faith and works. Or it's faith that produce work. No, it says you believe, but you don't work at all. His faith is automatically what? Counted for righteousness. You see that? That much alone is enough. So we got a problem right here. Well, it's not a problem because if you look at Romans chapter 1 and the first 10 verses, who is it speaking to? It's speaking to the Christians. The called of Jesus. The church. Right? You know that. But is that what it said at James 2? Look at James 1.1. 1, 1. James 1.1 1, 1 told you who it was speaking to. J-E-W-S. <laughs> Jews. It's at the very first verse, but you just jumped all the way to chapter 2. See, it's Jews. Not only that, it showed you the time period. Look at chapter 5 and verse 3. Chapter 5 and verse 3. If you look at chapter 5 and verse 3, it's at a different time period. It's at the tribulation. Last days. It's talking about the last days. So this is Jews in the tribulation. You know why this definitely matches up? Because all you have to do is... when See, Scripture interprets Scripture. They all build upon each other. Why is it... See, here's a question. Then why does Revelation 7 mention about the 12 tribes of Israel, the Jews? Why does it mention that in the tribulation, huh? Unless, see... Not only that, if you look at... Why did Revelation 14, verse 12... Why did it say, keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus? Yep. Why did it say commandments and faith? Because, see, it matches. What else are you going to... See, that's why dividing makes perfect sense of the other scriptures. When you divide things rightly, everything will fit into place and make sense. But you try to harmonize this with this, you can't do it. That doesn't make sense. You divide it. See? It's that simple. It's this simple and you don't have a problem. If you don't believe me, look at their interpretations of James 2. All right? Some of them go three pages long just on, one, uh, just on this little verse. Do you think that's what God intended? <laughs> so that's why dispensationalism is important.